Melbourne. Happy to sink our teeth into Sean Maloney, Ken Laban and Carl Tendana on board for the call. Yeah, can't wait for this one. Shorty Kiora Koto Katonga Minui Kia Koto Itene Poi Kimu Futipaura Itema Kapo Pango Toko Fitu Mea Samoa Pedro Paono Ken Laban Malo Lava Sungi Iya Kao Tanana Ma Sean Maloney Ate Fatalofa Atu Le Pai El Me Malo Le Nei Avanoa O Samoa Malo Lava Samoa Malo Si Lava Samoa Thank you Sean Thank you, KT. It really is a banger of a final, Shawnee. You know, with this weather, it's going to be physical. It's going to shorten up the lines of Samoa team, upsetting the home team in their semi final in ET Extra Time New Zealand with dominant against the USA in their semi final to set up this banger. Well, it's New Zealand who are the, the defending champions We're here in Cape Town. We haven't been here. On the World Series since 2019. And these two teams haven't met in a cup final in over a decade, KT. It's been 85 tournaments since these two squared off. And on that occasion, way back when it was Samoa. Too good. Oh, yeah, they really did have a fantastic squad back then, Samoa. Some absolute legends in their squad. Isn't it fitting that these two teams are such an iconic place in South Africa get to meet again in a cup final? Okay, time now for the anthems of both Samoa and New Zealand.
instantly but why can't i hit anything with a monitor like this how can you even rank up enough of this let's roll out a monitor that has the response time to bring you to the next level let's dive in shall we a conventional gaming monitor took three milliseconds to go from black to white for gaming oled by lg display just 0.03 milliseconds that's 100 times faster than a conventional gaming monitor talk about a blowout why the difference when gaming OLED receives a signal, the pixels react instantly. Meanwhile, a conventional gaming monitor needs time to rotate the pixels when it receives a signal. Right now, gamers are probably wondering just one thing. How does it affect my game? Well, I'll show you. See this? When the response time is slow, there's going to be blur. When it's this fast, see? No blur. No blur, better aim, period. So what hurts do conventional gaming monitors have to be to catch up with the gaming OLED? For this, I need to explain what MPRT is. It's... it's complicated. But, let me break it down. For MPRT to be 3.3 milliseconds, OLED needs to be 240 hertz, while LCD needs to be 480 hertz. Ha! Gaming OLED wins again. Although, conventional gaming monitors do have their own way to reduce blur. It's called overdrive. But, the thing with overdrive is, there's less blur, sure, but ghosting appears. So, why risk it with ghosting when you can stay crazy crisp with gaming OLED? I think you get my point, but there's more. Response time problems create input lag. With simultaneous input, you can see that conventional gaming monitors will appear way later. Sure, you can click at the same time, but it's never gonna keep up with the gaming OLED speed. So, verdict? No contest, no question. Gaming OLED blazes through the finish line. Play and see. Better response time, better performance.
There's some room there as well for Falanico. He'll tap. He'll run. And he should score. He does. He slides it in and takes his team up by five. What do you think about for the majority of this first half? They've been stuck in their own corner. Five metres out from no try line for the majority. They use the kick to get downtown. They're back to the fence. They put New Zealand behind on the heels. And then the pressure come on New Zealand. The little discipline cost them. There's three penalties in a row. And they slide in. That's massive for the money somewhat. Patience from Farn Eagle. He's having a Sunday to remember in Cape Town. Oh no, that one catches the crossbar, but Farn Eagle was a man who stepped up, went whack in extra time against South Africa to put them in this cup final. Up by five, and we've got 30 seconds to run in this. First half, that's a well-weighted restart as well. New Zealand will do it tough, coming away from their red zone. Leo, there's one sending over towards Dixon. And a good feet and the slide and the pop from Rocco Lusoa. There are three blue jerseys there to collect him. And they come wading through the breakdown. Fighting is Le Tufia. It's been stolen away here by Samoa. This could be a crucial moment coming here. It's still live. Samoa with numbers to burn. Wide right. They send it that way now. Was a pass okay? They'll say it was Will they? There's so much indecision out in the middle. Tuatama plays it on. He scores it, but I think they're calling it back. They say no try. Yeah, I think it's correct. Or Fallen Eagle was the one under duress. You watch it here. It's the read by Brady Rush. Watch where that green line is. Oh, geez. On that replay, I'm unsure. I think it's just that he's come the other side, KT. Rather than going left, right, he's gone right, left on the backhand. And it's, it's an illusion of sorts. And at the break, in our cup final, it is Samoa leading New Zealand by five. Your delivery van makes a very wary and dangerous trip back from halfway. Don't go through floodwaters, DHL. That's a golden rule. And that's what we've had through seven minutes of action. And it's just been rain on rain on rain. And crucially, a Samoa try against New Zealand. They are up by five. Midfield now for Rockal Asai. So much experience in this. All back Seven's outfit, and speaking of, there is Dixon getting it up what, towards what? the 22. Rockler Soa sitting it high, tough one for Cook Savage to get through. Scored his maiden 
series try earlier today against the USA. Okay, New Zealand finally getting a chance to get it to the edges. Great ball in field from Rush. Now for Dixon. Under pressure, though, in goes the hitman, Afasua. He hasn't missed all weekend long. He's been tenderizing bodies all the way through. Here we go, Samoa with a turnover. Or oh, penalty. The initial call of his ball was out. Yeah, I think you've got a call from your sister referee there, AJ Jacobs. Samoa. Just wait, wait, wait. I just want to stop that. Putting on the physicality of New Zealand at the moment. New Zealand not wanting to kick. Brady Rush comes over the top and splashes down. New Zealand had numbers there. Let's go. Subs. So New Zealand get the penalty after all of that. Let's go. It's interesting too, Samoa, one of the only teams on the circuit to deploy a sweeper in behind, so only six up for Samoa. So hard to get the ball out wide and take advantage of that extra man in attack. It's a tactic that Samoa have employed really well themselves, kicking in behind and giving chase, and here they are hunting down and making the stop right on the New Zealand 22. There goes Slater. Making yet another tackle. Has led his team this weekend on that front. Cross field from Cook Savage. Here's some pace on the outside. The ball always good too. New Zealand should be able to take this away. They should be able to level it up. And they should go in front. And it is Rush. This kid finally getting some consistent game time in the sixth jersey. Brady Rush, he has got an engine, that's for sure. You can see he just bites down on that mouth guard. He knows how important it is and how important it is to put it down underneath the horns. This to uh, hit the front and conversion is good. The boot of Cook Savage, so it is New Zealand now leading by two. Yeah, one of their power players, Amanaki Nicole, fell down awkwardly in the last passage of play. So Tony Ashu and Amanaki Nicole, their two power players, are gone for the rest of this final four and a half player. minutes. Is an age. Oh, there he is. So a couple of young pubs are going to have to step up here, I think. Jersey 23, Lewis Orman has come on for NZ. It has been such a physical and bruising knock them down battle. So far, that's a well weighted restart from New Zealand. And Samoa will plug it in behind and give Chase a sweepers back, though. And then they send a wild pass out the back. Samoa piling in, looking for the turnover. There's space short side. If Dixon wants to go that way, and that's where he comes. Almost better off without ball for large parts of this game. Just get it down the other end. Try and force the penalty and go away with it in that fashion. Samoa, this one's skewing right. Oh, that is a long way, the wrong way for Samoa off the boot of Tuitama. Oh, that's a mistake, unfortunately. It was the right idea. Took it back into the 22. So he kicked it out on the full, so it come all the way back. But you're right, Sean, I agree with you. It's better to have the defense rather than having ball in hand both teams getting very tactical now time off some old coach by a legend in their rugby ranks in the form of brian lemur it's clark laidlaw shot calling for new zealand time back on both teams looking to climb the series ladder with a win here in pursuit of the blitz box, they can't, they sit at the top. Rockwell Soa under pressure, the front is picked off. Stolen away by Samoa. New Zealand flying through though, it's scrappy. Dixon taps away. 
And all of a sudden there's some room out to the right for New Zealand. That's the way they head. Tony Tao. Lost there by New Zealand. Samoa kept themselves Thank you. well and Thank truly you. in the cup final with that play. Oh, desperations on both sides of the ball. Samoa doing some fantastic work, to work on those wide channels. Number one. Could have, could have just gone through the hands of drawn pass. They created the overlap, New Zealand. Roger Sola, he's been fantastic coming off the bench. He's going to be asked to just take your medicine, aim up here. It's a final. This is the same again here, Kate Teddy. He just go crack and kick it as far as you can. Will they do it, though, is the question. I think they're one of the better teams at doing it. I would, I would turn New Zealand around. It's only a two-point difference. Back your defense a long, long time ago, two and a half Point. minutes. Strikes good, Samoa. Well, oh, they'll put it in front of their own posts initially, and now they come with weird, back. dangerous stuff. It's gone backwards, though. Still under pressure. They dance with that touchline, and they hand possession back. Oh, oh we've got a Samoa there. penalty. Wow. That will help. What are they thinking? Now they tap. They'll go with, again, Samoa. Throwing around what is essentially a piece of soap in front at their own post. Good work with the pick and reload. Far side there, New Zealand fighting at the breakdown. Samoa. Oh, trouble here, surely. The rush team misses the shot. The target's been evaded, and Samoa will tow it ahead. Out in for shoot is Tuatama. Back is Tonga Tau. Tuatama, clever with that play. Tuatama now, surely with a seal, surely with a penalty. Yes, there's the call. Samoa tapping and going, they just need to put through the hands, across to the left, Samoa! <laughs> From their own try line, they've taken it, the full 100, and they've taken themselves to a three-point lead. But it was back with it, did some great work, only two metres out from the try line. It was a turnover and a steal at the breakdown. And there's the fancy finish from Maleko, who's been absolutely outstanding, bringing the heat all weekend long. Well, he's a HSBC Dream Team nominee, I think, with that play. They will well and truly be secured inside the starting seven. They've just got to defend now for 35 seconds. And the back to defence all weekend long. I'm sure Brian Limar would be saying, kick it long, force New Zealand to run 95 metres if they want to win this cup final. Let's go. Samoa cleverly. Go long. New Zealand. It's almost last chance time. We've got five seconds to go. Samoa, that will be enough, will it? I'll keep going through the league. I'll have the scrum. No We've still got one final play. We've still got one scrum. And I can tell you where it's headed, Carlton Let's go. They'll pack it and they'll send it towards the waterfront in Cape Town. The players are coming onto the field. There's a New Zealand player down. You can see there. I feel like my leg.
high-powered mobile device allows me to create and share powerful... to the people watching at home? Yeah, um, they never know I, if I hello little Fatawa, if I'm a phone or a, or Tai Tai Malanga, Pulenga, Malika Tenny, Malawa, Mansamoa, Molia Twelve after Tele, Tapo in Malus of Tato Atunu, my Lao Malu Malo, Tamai Tai Palemi or Capeneta Malpalmene, a pair for you, I'm going to talk here to you. Yeah, make sure to start to do Samoa, and not to Samoa, so Samoa, so Tapa, so say two and a long. But I tell the top top way, my five no for Talo, they are the Inga, the Fafoy, the Tua, Fafta, Tele, Lofatu, Tato, the right Samoa. When we are kissing Massi, or the Manma Lolea, or the Malofa Lema Taulanga, Lea, Alampa, now start to do, or the Malofa kissing Massi start to do. Lofatu. Congratulations, Brian Salopa. Thank you. Well, thing I really got out of that, Shawnee was that he wanted to give back to the community, to his players, to his country. Absolute legend, Brian Lima. It's back to Rupert, who's found himself the player of the final. Uh, congratulations, Junior's here to translate for us if required. What does this mean to you to have won the Cape Town Sevens for Manu Samoa? Uh, Una fue el malo, se fue y me llamó a la ciudad. Yo soy la ciudad de 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 la ciudad um, he gives us the strength and um, secondly we'd like to thank our supporters our families and uh, all of Samoa back home Ah, Bello Maliko, you are the HSBC player of the final. Congratulations. Lisa is here from HSBC to present you with your award. Well played. So what does all that mean in terms of the series and Samoa? <laughs> Out of nowhere go equal with the blitz box at the top of the men's standings australia take a big slide down the ladder of the defending series champions that's the aussies and new zealand locked at the top before we head off to hamilton early next year 
points differential the difference. Oh, it is a look at the closing stage of New Zealand's big win against Australia here in Cape Town. They went down last week in Dubai. Once beaten. And on the men's side, Samoa slipping and sliding their way to the silverware in South Africa. Time now for our presentations as New Zealand women come up as they did here in 2019, KT. Yeah, they're a group that really grew throughout the tournament. Lindia Newt, they had a game plan that really tested the Australians with Tiana Penetani called that cup final. Tiana, what did you make of this New Zealand side? Well, they came to play, KT. They clearly had a sour taste in their mouth left from last week in Dubai as well as here in Cape Town at the Rugby World Cup Sevens a few months ago. So they just didn't let Australia breathe. They had all the possession in the first half and they made the most of it. And back their defence, that was the most impressive part, was their defensive work. Tyler Nathan, Wong, Kelly Brazier really leading the charge. But it was great to see the youngsters step up and take this opportunity with both hands. And what did you think of the mentality of this Australian team when you saw them under pressure? Well, I think the wet weather had a lot to do with it. They've played some dry footy over the last couple of weeks, and this is really the only game where it was wet, so I had to change the game plan. But New Zealand identified that, made the most of when they had ball in hand, but put Australia under the pump as well when Australia had any form of possession. Showed a little bit of spark, did Australia, but it was too little too late. Now, you've worn this Australian sevens jersey. You know how this will hurt their pride. They're coming into Hamil Hamilton and Sydney, how spicy. Oh, spicy as, and that's what we love. Game on between these two. It just keeps the rivalry alive. You know, it's lit the fire in the belly last week in Dubai for New Zealand. No doubt it'll be the same in Hamilton for Australia. And now to Samoa, who have just been resurgent over these last couple of years. They were a team who had so much promise, but were just unable, KT, to make a gel when it needed to come together. But we've seen over these last couple of tournaments that they are... A side on the rise. Well, that's the thing. So many times they've made their way into the cup quarterfinals, the cup semifinals, and fallen at their last hurdle to get into a cup final. Finally, they get there and they have these conditions. I think that suited them, suited their game plan, and the way they were able to affect that. And we talk about the young players and this New Zealand team. A lot of these young players for the Samoa tasting victory and goal taste sweet around the neck. Doesn't it, what? Especially in Cape Town. Before Christmas as well, something special in the air around this tournament, always. And these two sides have served up some real class in case of the world champions, New Zealand women and some more men. just keeps getting it done at the top of she was number one last week too ahead of Ulan Nassau and Felix Hotham of New Zealand well as is customary when the New Zealand women take a title Carlton Anna they celebrate as only they know how yeah it's been a very long time and probably the first time for a lot of these women to get this experience
against the New Zealand women with a nice little bow on it. And now Samoa, Carlton Anna, will deliver their version, which is titled the Sippy Tau, and it's been a long time since Samoa uh, and Sevens have been able to perform this. What a moment for these young men. So stoked for them. Here we go. This will be very, very special. team on the circuit they will head to Hamilton as the number one seeds and that's where we'll do it next in the new year to you and yours friends and family take care of each other over the festive season and we'll see you all again in January for the next leg of the HSBC World Rugby 7 Series